Having a look. Okay, we have a question for you, Luciano, from Dalia Malki. Uh, the question is, is there agreement about the subset of parties that's post their sortition bid? If yes, how is this agreement achieved? Uh, so, so if I understand correctly, you're you're asking how how do you choose the parties that participate in the committee to produce the lead, right? Um, uh, there's going to be a delay uh, because I assume Dalia is uh, asking this question after like she's seen this the live on YouTube, uh, but let's assume that's that's the case here. So okay, so if, so if so if if that is the case, then. Uh, Normally, what we what we suggest is to use homomorphic sortition for systems of size about 100, so like uh, 200 participants. So some blockchains such as Aptos uh, have uh, this number of validators. Other blockchains such as Cosmos, what they do is that they cap the system to where the validators are a rich list. So let's say the top 200. So the, the idea would be to execute the, the protocol where the participants are this top 200, for example, or in the case of a small blockchain, all the validators. So the key here is that the number of participants is in the around the, the hundreds, but the stake, it can be in order of billions, which is the case of many blockchains. Great, thank you. I can see she's typing. So before we move on, I'll give her a couple seconds. Okay, well, we can move on. Um, so yeah, there's a question for Schwin, uh, for Kasupeya uh, by Ali Reza, Reza Kabusi. To mitigate the malleability issue, I was wondering if using, if using the DDH-based PVSS, which comes with uh, POK instead of the pairing based version used in your work obviates the need for CK snark. Mm, okay. Not sure if I fully understand the question. Uh, Shun, do you understand the question <laughs> since you're more of an expert in this? I also posted it in the um, Zoom uh, chat. Um, okay. So DDH based PVSS, which comes with POK instead of pairing based version. Um, I mean, does, does this necessarily solve the malleability issue though, is, is what I wonder. Um, but there are, I, I wouldn't necessarily say so, um, because even with this, you, you need, you want to prove that the, that the dealer knows the secret itself. Right, like you, you wouldn't want to be able to. Um, we share uh, the and a cipher text with a different instance, anyways. Um, like we, we want to just completely tie it together, and I think with RO is more robust um, than using the DDH model, as, as as far as I understand. All right, thank you. I have a question for Surat. Well, before we go into that, um, Dalia has clarified uh, Luciano in the Slack channel. Uh, so she says, uh, say that I have the winning sortition value. What guarantees that all validators receive it? You want to comment on that? Yeah, so uh, the idea is basically that the, the result of the sortition, it will, every correct process will issue a partial decryption so essentially what's happening is that there is a reliable broadcast and uh, okay, uh, true, not all validators might receive it, but then it's the, if, if, you, if, you, if, I, if I may use a, a particular example, if, if I, I talked about Cosmos, so if you take tender mint consensus, for instance, this is the place where you wait for the proposal of the validator. So essentially the proposal will come with the proof. So uh, once you receive the proposal, you can see that the process immediately, you can immediately see that the process was elected. And, and essentially this is what happens. But uh, yeah, so sometimes because of asynchrony, it might be that someone is elected 
by the election protocol and because of timeouts they do not get uh, they 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 cannot publish the block but the idea is that after gst once the system stabilizes everything will be correct and prior to gst the protocol does not degenerate where everyone is kicked out so basically the system survives prior to gst and it works well after gst All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, I have a question for Sura. Um, so you, I don't know if you've seen it already in the Slack channel, but uh, for completeness, so I'm wondering of the applications of uh, the of the proposed protocol in the presentation, especially compared with your previous work, uh, the Spark paper, and uh, in particular, uh, how do you see uh, the uh, so basically, the, in terms of applications, which applications will be more relevant for SPART or for the proposed EKG? So SPART is a randomly speaking, and that, yeah, by that I mean that only, you can possibly use it for other things, but it's mostly fo focused on generating random random values, like sequential random values in partial synchrony. DKG is much more general. You can, of course, use, a, once you do a DKG, you can use like a threshold signatures, to generate continuous stream of random values, but with high threshold DKG, you can get, get a randomness beacon that requires contribution from a large fraction of uh, honest nodes, uh, probably more uh, resilient against uh, collision attacks. That's uh, one application of high threshold DKG. Uh, uh, again, like uh, some of the SMR uh, state machine applications uh, uses relies on high threshold DKG to get linear uh, communication cost consensus. Like they need, they especially want high threshold signatures. That's another application of a, a high threshold uh, DKG. And so beyond that, I, I didn't have time to go through the extensions, but if you look at how our construction is built, you can use that construction to do distributed key generation for others, like distributed key generation as a service where you have a bunch of nodes, let's say a small number of nodes, 50 nodes, they can generate uh, secret keys for 2000 nodes. So if, in those kind of setting, you want the polynomial degree to be arbitrarily large. So that's in the KG as a service, you can also use our construction um, to, to be able to do that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, now I have a question for Ryan as well. So um, have you thought about incentives for delegated nodes to perform their part of the work? And uh, in particular, what happens if the delegator is not honest or if the delegated node is not responsive? So it's a three part question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, great question. Uh, for the incentives part, um, I think this would just be something like where you purchase cloud machines to do this for you. So I think in the paper we show that like, you know, you as the prover would pay like two cents or something to get the speed up that we described. Um, you could imagine for like a full system or a blockchain, you could maybe have like a, a set of nodes that kind of the cost of them is split among um, everybody. But uh, we basically showed that like, yeah, the cost is super cheap in terms of um, who would pay for this kind of up to the specific application. Um, that was a question if the delegator is not honest. So that doesn't really make sense because the delegator like, the work is for them. Like they want to generate this proof for some particular reason. So, I mean, if they're not honest, it's like, it doesn't matter whether you run our delegation protocol or not, you have you have issues. Um, and then if one of the workers is not responsive, you can't, uh, well, it depends. Uh, but in general, you can't make progress if, uh, so if any of the workers kind of, you know, go completely offline, you would probably have to restart the computation. There's a few nuances to that, but generally speaking, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, one more question for uh, homomorphic sortition. Uh, so the last presentation, can one use this procedure for election of a fixed size committee? So Luciano again. Can you hear me now? Hear you. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hear you. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, so the, the protocol was designed to elect a single process, but theoretically you could achieve that by by selecting more than one secret, and then you would have to essentially have several proofs inside the, each cake. But uh, if uh, if your application requires, let's say, a committee of size S, and you're you're willing to have, a, for example, committees of size S minus one or S plus one, we actually have another paper that is more uh, directed to committee elections. 
It's called uh, uh, randomness from approximate agreement. I, I, if you search it, you you find it. But uh, so so to go straight to the point, you could, but the protocol was not designed to do that because otherwise you you the size of your secret would be the size of the committee that you're electing. 